Hi, and welcome to section four of Learning Lodash, where we will focus on writing components for our recipe application front end. In the previous section, we learned how to use Lodash array methods to add, remove, and dedupe tags when creating a recipe. In this section, we are going to start by looking at a Lodash method for extending objects. We'll use that method to build an extensible event binding system for our components. Then we will build a base input component that will be used by our existing filter input component and we will also build a search input component upon the base input. Lodash provides ways for us to code flexible interfaces with a degree of type safety, and we'll explore that a bit while building out our search input component. Now let's move on to the first video in this section where we will learn about extending the properties of the base component. Throughout the video course, we have used modular component controllers on the front end to render our HTML and manage our events. Our events, however, are not managed in any particular structure, which will lead to maintainability issues in the future. In this video, we will create that structure and refactor our filter input component to use it. We are going to take a look at the format we want to follow for declaring events in our components. We will refactor our filter input component to use this event declaration syntax. We will then build a method in the base component that will bind events according to the structure that we have declared. We will utilize methods Lodash provides to make our event handler declarations more versatile. Finally, we'll test that our refactoring works as expected in the filter input component. As we've built out some of the functionality of our components, you may have noticed that we have to bind events at certain times in our component's lifecycle, either after they are rendered or after another event handler is called. This makes events difficult to track with DOM changes within a component, and it also makes it difficult for other components to be aware of events happening in other parts of the application. To help alleviate this problem, we're going to build a method in our base component that will be responsible for creating event handlers based on an events object that is defined per component. The object will have event types as its keys and its values will consist of arrays. Each array will contain an event handler and an optional selector that, if defined, will only call the handler if the event's DOM target matches the element for that selector. This is very similar to how frameworks like Backbone manage events using a technique called event delegation. Let's start by creating an events object in our filter input component. First, go to the recipes client repo and run git checkout video-4-1. This will get you the latest code you need to follow along with this section. Also, run npm run dev so that any changes to your components will trigger a rebuild of the JavaScript source. When you have completed these steps, open the component JavaScript file at app slash components slash filters slash input slash index.js. We are going to add an events property within the call to create that is made right after the constructor property is set. This ensures that the property will exist on all instances of the component that are created within our application. The event binding that we're refactoring here is the input event that is currently bound in the init method. So the events key that we will add is the input event type, and the value will be an array. The first item in the array is the string filter items, which will be used to call the filter items method in the component. The second item in the array is a selector for our filter input element, dot filter dash input dash form input. This ensures that the event handler will only be called if the input event originates from that input. Don't forget to remove the add event listener call that's made from init so we don't bind an event twice. Now that we have an events object created for the filter input, let's create the method that will use that object to bind the event handlers. Open up app slash components slash base slash index.js to edit our base component. At the top of the file, we're going to add several Lodash methods. The first one is part of the Lodash Objects API, Assign, which handles merging the properties of several source objects into a target object. The next two are in the Lang API, isElement and isString, which as you may have guessed, check a variable's type to see if it's a DOM element or a string. What's great about these type functions, especially the ones that check primitives, is that they will detect a primitive type even if it was created using the new syntax. Finally, add for each, as we'll use that to iterate the events object to bind our handlers. In the base component constructor, let's refactor our type check of config.el to use isElement. Also, before the call to init, we'll set this.events using assign. We provide the component's events prototype as the target to extend, with a fallback to a plain object. The source object will be config.events. If that value is not provided, then nothing will be extended. However, this gives us the ability to have event handlers pass between components, which we'll utilize in a later video. After that line, call this.addEventListeners. Below the init method, we will add the addEventListeners method. 
This method simply calls the lodash for each method, passing this.events as the first parameter, and this.addListener as the callback for the iterator bound to the component's this context. Next, we'll add the addListener method. This method will take the event handler and selector array as its first parameter, and the event type as its second. Create a handler func variable to hold the first element of the array, and a selector variable to hold the second element. Then call this.el.addEventListener to bind a handler to the component's root element. The event type is the first parameter, and the second is an anonymous function that receives the event object as its parameter. The function will first initialize a node variable, and then on the next line check to see if a selector was specified for this event type. If it is, then we call this.el.querySelector to get the element associated with the selector. The next line will check if the node variable is equal to event.target. If it is not, then we want to exit the handler. If it does match, or if we did not specify a selector to check against, we return from the handler with a call to our handler func variable. This is where isString comes into use. We check to see if handler func is a string, and if it is, we make an assumption that the string represents a method on the component. If it is not a string, we attempt to call it using function.prototype.call, passing the component's context onto the function and the event object as its sole parameter. What this does is enable us to specify either methods of our component as handlers or custom handlers that might even exist in other components. Finally, close out the anonymous handler, binding it to the component, and pass false as a third parameter to disable event capturing. Once you've saved this file from the console, run npm run start in your recipes client repo. Also, cd into your recipes API repo and run npm run start if you do not yet have that loaded. Open http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 9000 in your browser and try filtering a name from the list. Notice that as you type a username, only the cards from that user will display. This is the same functionality we had before, but now we've achieved it using an event binding method that can be shared with our other components, allowing us to cleanly add more functionality into our application. In this video, we have started digging a bit more into our front-end component system to make it easier to write future components for our application. We use the lodash assign method to create an extensible events object, and we also use two new methods from the lodash lang API to check variable types. We refactored the filter input component to use the new event binding and tested our component after the changes.